Today's video, I want to cover one of the most important topics of EMS, which is pulmonary edema and congestive heart failure. My aim with this video, by the end of it, you're going to have this down cold and you're going to know it the rest of your life inside of EMS. So acute pulmonary edema, congestive heart failure. What's the first to find, make sure we're on the same page and we understand what we know what we're talking about. So first is we're talking about pulmonary edema. This is fluid in the bases of the lungs. Fluid is filling up the alveoli at the bottom of the lungs, thus causing gas exchange, oxygen going in, carbon dioxide going out to not perform up to standard, causing the patient to then be hypoxic have low SpO2 levels, chest pain, difficulty breathing, calling the ambulance. Now we're gonna talk about why this all happens. Let's go back to defining. Fluid in the lungs due to the heart failure to pump effectively. So we have heart failure, which causes the heart not to pump effectively. So blood should be moving forward easily. Instead, we're backing up. I'm gonna to explain about that in a little bit. Now what else? myocardial infarction, valve failure, chronically weak ventricles. Let me explain here. Those are some of the reasons why you might end up in heart failure. A valve could fail. Valves help the blood move forward and not get stuck back up in the atrius, right? Muscle. If we have heart muscle dying due to a heart attack, a myocardial infarction, that's an issue, right? And obviously someone can be diagnosed with CHF, congestive heart failure, and they have a flare up of their CHF, or you find that now the left ventricle is getting more weak, their heart failure is flaring up, and now they have fluid pulmonary edema in their lungs acutely or gradually over a few days, and they call 911. So here's what occurs with CHF. First off, we have two sides of the heart, the right side and left side. So let's talk about the left side first. Remember, the left ventricle pumps blood out to the rest of the body, right? Now, what is above the left ventricle? Well, there's a valve that sits there. That's our mitral valve. And what's above that? Well, our left atrium. And then what is it? What actually feeds the left atrium, the pulmonary vein. Right, right? So what does this mean for our pulmonary edema? How does this occur? Well, the big key I wanna stick in your brain is blood backs up. Watch this. So let's say the left ventricle fails as a pump, okay? The goal of that left ventricle is to push blood up through to the aorta to get blood out to the rest of the body into our arterial system, right? So if the left ventricle fails, weak, it's weak, here's what happens. Pressure starts to build up in the pulmonary veins. So you get all this blood that is going to the pulmonary veins being pushed to the left side of the heart and then it starts to slow up it. And then eventually the pressure gets so great in the pulmonary veins, it's got nowhere else to go. So it leaks over into our alveoli. Okay, so here's what happens. Blood backs up into the lungs. Three, poor gas exchange occurs at the alveoli level. And that's how when you put your scope on, that, on your patient's chest, you hear rails bilaterally. And then you go, this could be CHF. Okay, that's the left side heart failure. Now, if the right side is involved as well, so I'll give you a scenario. Let's say the right ventricle fails the pump, right? Well, let's back it up. Hang on a second. Right ventricle, let me go up, up the chain. Okay, we have the tricuspid valve. Okay, let me up the chain again. We have the right atria. Okay, then what feeds the right atria? The venous system. Particularly what? The SVC and IVC. What's that mean? The superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. That's the SVC and IVC. 
So the right ventricle fails the pump. Blood backs up into the SVC and the IVC. And so what is that going to present as? It's going to present as blood fluid backing up in the venous system, causing venous congestion. How does that show itself in the body with this right side heart failure? JVD, jugular vein distension. What else? Down by the legs, pedal edema, edema in the legs. So this is what we want to look for. And this is how CHF actually occurs. So you're called out lights and sirens, difficulty breathing, chest pain patient. You arrive, you find a 65 year old male sitting in front of you in a tripod position. Could this be CHF? It certainly could be. Let's check it out. So here are some of the hallmark sign symptoms you should watch for and let's go through them. Now, each sign symptom has a story and let me explain. Chest pain, of course, because you got to do with the heart and the lungs. Shortness of breath, increased respiratory rate, decreased, not written down, SpO2. Rails or crackles bilaterally, okay? That rubbing sound, we hear that bilaterally, right? Now, I put some stars here for some interesting cases. Let me explain. Test questions love to talk about exertional pain or exertional shortness of breath. So you go to someone, they get a history of CHF and ah, I'm just not feeling right. Every time I try and exercise or every time I try and get up and do the chores or ah, every time I get out of bed, I'm just so short of breath. Ah, this is it. This is not me. Those are like red flags. Okay, there's something wrong. I also want to touch on these parts, which I, I didn't start with one, but this is a good one too. Fatigue or weakness tired. That's where we're kind of getting at. They're not themselves, but a history of CHF, red flag. Okay. Increasing edema in the legs. Look out for that JVD. Okay. Not written down here, but that JVD and the increase. Okay. Of the pedal edema, the inability to move around and do their daily activities. That they usually do. They can't sleep. They just can't sleep because they're so short of breath. Keep waking up. And they call 911 in the middle of the night. Tripod position. Put it all together. These are signs and symptoms of a CHF. Make sure if you see this patient, make sure to do an EKG to further investigate what might be going on. Remember, CHF isn't just CHF. This patient could be having a heart attack right now. By clicking in the first link in the description, you get lifetime access to my Video Vault program. The Video Vault includes over 480 videos of content and now holds over 2,000 National Registry Practice Test questions. Also includes some really awesome bonuses like worksheets, drug cards that are pre-filled out all for you, community group access to ask me questions and audio files when you are on the go. The video vault will find you no matter where you're at, whether you're an EMR, EMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic student. And my students use this, whether you are getting ready for school, in school right now, or getting ready to go past your national registry exams. So click the first link in the description right now and get yourself lifetime access to the video vault today. I'll see you there.